Hey everybody, today we will be learning about thermal overpressure. We will be taking a look at what causes a thermal overpressure, the consequences, and some safeguards to protect against it. Let's join the team in the field. I'm isolating the downstream equipment so we can start work this afternoon. What a nice day outside. It's a hot day to be doing maintenance and coveralls. Look over there. There's a puddle of oil underneath that pipe rack. Let's go see if we can determine what's going on. This pipe flange is leaking oil. How did that happen? I blocked in this line earlier today, closing these two valves and draining between them so that we could do work on the downstream equipment. This looks like a thermal overpressure case. This section did not have any flow. I don't see the source of pressure. Unlike other types of overpressure, the thermal pressure source is not always directly in the flow path of the system. Thermal overpressure happens when the temperature of a blocked-in section increases and expands the contained product. With nowhere for the pressure to be relieved, the material is overpressured, resulting in a loss of containment. The most common source of thermal overpressure is the sun, which heated the outside piping today. It does not take a significant temperature increase to raise the pressure in a pipe. Especially when we block in a high vapor pressure product like oil that is easily vaporized. What was holding pressure on the other side of the pipe? On one end was the closed valve and the other was a check valve. When the flange split, the downstream side of the check valve was open to atmospheric pressure and liquid started draining from the system. I thought we had to assume check valves didn't hold back pressure. Well, they can and do. We assume they have a tight seal when we want them to leak and that they're stuck open when we want them to hold. As you've seen, both can occur and lead to dangerous situations. What else can cause thermal overpressure? Heat tracing, blocked-in exchangers, and heaters can also overpressure stagnant products. Alarms and shutdowns will not work to turn off the source in this case. What are the safeguards for this type of hazard? Thermal overpressure can be avoided if closed-off sections are isolated properly and drained. In this scenario, we should have isolated upstream of the check valve and drained both sides of the check valve so that product was not stored between the check valve and downstream manual valve. We can also add thermal pressure safety valves when isolating and draining is not an available option. Thermal overpressure occurs in isolated regions of a system. When energy is added to the constant volume in the form of heat, High pressures develop, splitting or rupturing equipment and piping. It is best practice to ensure there are no blocked-in sections containing products that can expand or vaporize when heated. This can be accomplished by draining between isolation points or in dead legs. Thermal pressure safety valves can also be installed to mitigate overpressure where isolation and drainage is not practical.